Uh, well, I'm gonna make this. <laughs> Hi, what the heck is this? This is a lot of fucking work. That's what it is. Uh, because I'm a fucking moron. That's that's how we're gonna roll. Wunzaba. Holy sh! Oh wow, wow! It's not the most stable one, but so do me. Hold <laughs> <laughs> the fucking camera, man. So just stop doing this, sir. Sir, you're. Sir. I hate myself for doing this. Minor illusion. Bitch. Just like, take a look at it, and you're pregnant. You think it was easy? Nope. Did you know that I don't really know how to build a wizard's tower? Yes. Fuck just become something. Fuck piece of shit. That's beautiful, right? Oops. I'm chaotic. But today we're gonna try and, and make this. And like this video or I will end it. Hello, welcome to Dungeon Goblin. It's your host, Rokus. Today we're gonna take this huge piece of foam and make it into a wizard tower. If you cannot clearly read. It was in the titles. Why should I do this? Why are we here? I don't know. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this and turn it into this. If you cannot see clearly, uh, it's just a grid. So how are we gonna do a grid? We're gonna take a goddamn master template. If you put holes into stuff, now I can map out where the line should be and I can do that pretty easily. So for that I need some sharp things because you need to, you know, penetrate the foam and stuff. After all is done, uh, I basically tried going through these small f things with a stick. That's 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 bad. I tried to do this with you know styrofoam as I told you, didn't work. I tried with this, that's very bad idea because you're not gonna do it. Just trust me on this one. I even tried to you know put holes in every single of these circles, and guess what? That was a pain in the But look, it's even stuck because I'm a dumb dog. So basically you need to get the angle right on the blade and then you start going through what did you cut and this will help you by taking this thing out. After spending about a good hour trying to assemble these things, 
not even assemble just to look and see how it would look i could not find a way to make them super looking like basically i could not make them look good so the only thing that i have right now that is like a shroud of hope is trying to make smaller pieces It's day four. So I decided to put these things here, like in this, this, these stripes that you can pretty much, you know, put it on your, you know, supporting piece. But what I found out is that it was a horrible idea. Don't do that because, first of all, uh, to put them and to firmly put them in place you need a lot a lot of hot glue it's not gonna look great and i'm not gonna do that again Even though this is an acrylic paint um, and it's not that horrible, I still decided to put myself um, a mask because, well, I would rather be, you know, safe than sorry. So, nobody cares when I put up the mask. Mm. Never f***ing do this, unless you're a moron like me, okay? It was actually worth it, in means of the build, but in means of cleaning shit up, I do not recommend this one bit. What's good about this thing is it doesn't really melt the foam but it's a lot of problems if you're doing this indoors save me and the stupid process of, uh, of this crisis was uh, rubbing alcohol if i would not have that i'd be uh, in a world of basically now the only thing that is probably left is this camera stop it don't cry it's gonna be okay even better now uh so how do you uh 
avoid this stupid crisis. Use common sense, which I clearly lack, and uh, you'll be gonna you're gonna be fine. You're just gonna be fine. But anything sprayable has small particles that could be harmful for you. So always try to use a respirator because even now, if you can clearly see, uh, it still has a lot of these uh, small residue from spraying. Like I don't know, five, three minutes maybe here. Use this. Don't be stupid. Do this outside, not indoors. It means that the paint itself, uh, it's actually pretty okay. Not gonna melt the foam, right? After coating this with acrylic paints, I decided to put a gray color on top of it. The paints are just basic acrylic paints that you can find at your art store that I get in a big bunch of tubes. And I just use them because they're quite cheap, they're effective as any other paints, and that was pretty much it. Afterwards, I just took a feather brush and do this kind of a almost lighting up uh, dry brushing method on the pieces. Uh, that gave a little bit different uh, coloring that I wanted and also it popped out the whole piece and that was basic. Now, in means of the roof, I just put some sticks on the top of it, making a little bit of dentures in the supporting piece and I decided to make more interesting roof rather than, you know, going all in, making it very precision based. Now, I decided to make shingles out of these 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 strips of foam and I really like the end result because afterwards when it was all finished I just put some texture on and the final result was pretty fun for me. It took a little bit of work but it's still better than applying every single individual shingle which I tried with this uh, piece that I just threw out and I found this the best method. Now, I painted it and coated it in black, and afterwards I decided to put bluish and uh, purplish color, because, well, for me that associates a little bit more with, with the wizards, and also the purple color is a little bit more nobility, mysterious type of vibes that I'm going. And after applying the blue, I just started to apply different shades of purple. And uh, I dry brushed this in white. Probably it was a mistake because this color was very nice. And um, after painting this up in purple, it was almost finished and I was very happy with the result. It means of a wizard's uh, roof, it was kind of perfect. But I decided to put white, I don't know, just to pop it out and it gave this almost snowy type of look uh, on the piece. I was not very happy with it when I started, but in the end it was okay because I still applied some washes, some different purple on the top and that was okay. It means of the piece now, I take a, a second look and it wasn't, you know, interesting enough. So I put more foam on top. I know it's it's kind of a blasphemy to put, you know, extra pieces when all the painting job is almost done. But I thought, you know, let, let's make an interesting piece rather than just a boring one. And I put extra rocks, shingles that I, you know, used and... Uh, it was looking pretty interesting, it was looking pretty fine and I decided to cover up the mistakes of the foam strips that I decided to go around the, the, the whole supporting piece and it actually worked. So afterwards I took some toothpicks, put it into the, the thing and uh, I didn't really know what to do, kind of looked like some kind of a Romanian you know, Dracula fantasy or whatever. Uh, and uh, what happened next was I wanted to actually make candles out of those spikes. Why is that? Uh, well, probably because I really enjoyed Dark Souls uh, aesthetic, uh, or was it like Bloodborne? And I thought I'm gonna put something here and it actually quite works well in the end. Now, there's a good tutorial that you can find at Black Magic's Craft, how he makes ca uh, candles. 
I have not saw that video beforehand and I was starting from the top going to the bottom and if I would do the same thing again I would probably start from the bottom and go up top and leave a little bit of the toothpick uh, uncovered and probably use color maybe like red to accentuate this candle a candle look to it now but in the end it still looked fine after applying you know the the the, the washes So how do you make rocks? You find some rocks that you put inside of this thing and then you put the foam and you just shake it off. The wood, I just used brown and that's basically it. It gave me a little bit more of a darker look, which I enjoy this kind of aesthetic. It kind of reminds me of Diablo, the first games, and I kind of like that aesthetic. And uh, after all it was done, proceeded to paint some more, fixing up some stuff. And one of the things that I actually was very proud of was I tried to imitate lightning. I, I don't know how to light up properly with paints yet, but I still tried with an extra uh, orange that I got from painting the windows itself. somehow decided to experiment with washes to give this interesting look to the rocks and did the same thing for the base. Now I did not wash the whole pieces with black uh, with, with homebrew wash because I did not manage to produce any of them uh, and uh, there's still some supplies coming to my house but I wanted to challenge myself to make a piece interesting by not even using that much washes. And in the end, it was looking pretty, pretty okay, and I quite enjoy it. So, one of the reasons why I like modular terrain to, you know, a single piece, huge, you know, terrain, is that I can make different buildings out of what I'm trying to make. Uh, I think that's pretty cool, right? Oh my god, it doesn't even fit in the frame. What will we do? Well, well, we can just take it off. We can just build something else. Uh, this could be, I don't know, look at this. A lighthouse, what do you thought? And we were trying to make wizard's tower. It could be just a small town wizard's hut, right? It's pretty goddamn neat. And uh, that's what modular gives you. So if you like this video, please give it a like. As I said beforehand, uh, if we get this video at least 60, 666, uh, likes i will try and revisit this tower and uh probably gonna do the interior of this place 
I hope this this video is interesting enough to get this, but what are we kidding? It's my second video. I'm not gonna have that amount of, of likes. So instead of that, let's let's try and make it a little bit more tangible, which is like 69 because that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. Bye. It's beautiful. It's playable. It's it's just ah, just like take a look at it and you're pregnant. <laughs>